I think the United Nations Convention Against Torture definition is a very good place to start. Severe physical or mental suffering inflicted for a variety of reasons by individuals acting in an official capacity. If it looks like torture, if it smells like torture, it's torture, and we shouldn't have done it, and we certainly need to make sure it doesn't happen again. I don't need a, a law or a rule to tell me what torture is. I know what it is uh, based on the values that I was raised on here in America. Anything that I wouldn't allow to be done to my own troops if they were captured by the enemy. Torture is always invoked in the name of national security. It's typically not used for eliciting information. That's not why Mr. Mugabe from Zimbabwe does it. It's not effective for that. But what it is effective at is intimidating opposition and, uh, you know, trampling society. My experience is every time I saw people even use harsh techniques uh, or fear-based techniques, uh, they did exactly the opposite of what we were trying to accomplish, which is they reinforced in the minds of the detainees why they had picked up arms against us. Uh, it reinforced to them that we were enemies, that we could not cooperate. Uh, and so every time I saw those techniques used, it damaged the relationship uh, that would have given us information, and I had to reverse that. Uh, so it, it was counterproductive to what we were trying to accomplish. It's defined, makes it seem like it has an intention of, you know, acquiring information or keeping people safe, when really it's just to break people down. If you hold a gun to someone's head and pull the trigger in a mock execution, that's not going to leave any physical marks, but the nightmares and terrors can go on for years. When you subject someone to profound and degrading humiliation, such as forced nakedness, such as wearing the underwear of uh, a man wearing a woman's underwear, those things may somehow seem, oh, what's the big deal? I can tell you, as someone who has examined and cared for individuals subjected to these things, the health consequences, the sense of shame can last for years, if not a lifetime. First of all, beyond the rhetoric, beyond the politics, the toll of human suffering of what we have done is profound. It is a myth and a lie to think that these methods, this torture, was somehow only done against terrorists and, you know, evildoers. Now, that's not to say no one deserves to be tortured, but it's really important to understand that many, if not most, of the individuals we subjected to these brutal methods were ultimately released without ever having been charged. And many of them, I fear, are shells of who they were. And that we have a moral obligation to help those individuals become whole in terms of in the case of torture, what people always who support torture never mention is the long-term effects of using it. Uh, for instance, the prison where I interrogated in Iraq, the number one reason foreign fighters gave for coming to Iraq to fight was because of torture and use of Muslim prisoners. We literally recruited thousands of fighters for Al-Qaeda by using torture and abuse, and those fighters came to Iraq and killed Americans. When I look at I look at the people in the Justice Department that wrote these memos. What does it mean that they went to work, they dressed up in suits and ties, and they sat down at their desks and they wrote barbaric practices? That's, but these are the civilized people that hold high-level jobs in our government. And here we're having a very civil discussion about what's, very, what's really very barbaric and uncivilized. I want to know what the threshold is now in this country, and I think it's getting higher and higher for what we'll tolerate. I think the first step in accountability for torture is to reckon with the fact that torture and inhumane treatment is unfortunately still going on, that we mostly lately have been talking about accountability for past torture, for the waterboarding, for what um, John, you, and Jay Bybee did, but I think that sort of misses, unfortunately, what's continuing to happen, which is the ways that people are being held, both on Guantanamo and here in, in the federal system, under deeply inhumane conditions. So I think it is about changing laws that stand on the books. What needs to happen is a clear accounting 
of what happened. This was a very complex interdisciplinary mechanism that allowed this to happen. So you had legal, medical, policy makers all involved. And so there needs to be a full 360 review of what happened. There needs to be basically something the equivalent of the Watergate hearings, something the equivalent uh, of the 911 commissions. To me, this is the great moral question of our time, and we need to treat it as such. We need to find out exactly what happened. We need to then figure out how to assure that this won't happen again. And then also to uh, care for those who uh, were the victims of this brutality.